Alright, welcome to Mega Net Gaming. And this is going to be our second review for the day. And the random number generator gave me another PlayStation 1 game. So this is going to be our third, let's see, one, two, fourth PlayStation 1 entry onto the list. Which, given that after my PC collection, my PlayStation 1 collection is the next largest category, it's not the all that surprising. And it seems like, despite ha me having a lot of gems in this PlayStation 1 collection, so far we've gotten Ford Truck Mania, which was atrocious, and then Shadow Tower, which was a game with... A game that I think was hampered mostly just by the time period it was released, and was hampered by just some very overly difficult controls but it, that Shadow Tower is one of those games where it has it's, it's it has everything that I would like in a game it's just the controls are so frustrating they require such pinpoint accuracy in a, such a nonsensical way at times that it takes away from the gameplay and we had All Star Slam and D-Ball which was a dodgeball game that was Mediocre, but still something it'd be fun to kill some time on if you had some friends. So basically, all the games are in the... The only one that barely cracked the top half of my review so far is Shadow Tower. And today, we get Patriotic Pinball. Which is, out of the four games so far that we've been given by the random number generator... We keep getting late, late, late PlayStation releases. This was released on April 17th of 2003. That's almost four years after the Dreamcast came to market. And a good three and a half years after the PlayStation 2 hit the market. It was developed by Wildfire Studios and published by Gotham Games. Wildfire Studios is also responsible for... Kiss Pinball, Devil's Island Pinball, Balls of Steel, Kiss Pinball, Austin Powers Pinball, Ultimate Pinball, which were all released before, as well as a, an arcade puzzle game for the Wii called Tumble Bugs and Tumble Bugs 2. Actually, it looks like these were... Tumble Bugs 1 was released for the iPad and the iPhone, as well as Windows. And then you have Tumblebugs 2, which was also on the Wii. So this is a game company that's not making your serious, your so-called serious games. Your first-person shooters, or your RPGs, or, or anything like that. They're not going to make the next, they're not going to make Elder Scrolls 6 or competition to that I should say. The company was founded in 1995 in Brisbane, Australia. And there's not really not a whole lot of information about them on the internet. Let's see if I can find some modern day information about them. Oh, they're still working on tumble bugs. Still working on tumble bugs. And the pinball games, they got Take Two Interactive and Apogee to GT Interactive to publish some of those. So they've had some well known publishers publish their games. There's a small development studio. They seem to be in the, in the market for kind of your fun, casual style game. So a game called Patriotic Pinball, which I got for a dollar at a Goodwill in the case. It has a manual. And this can't be good now, can it? Oh. It, it's it's definitely not going to make the the masterpiece list or even the four category. But it is a good enough to at least say it's a mediocre game or even a good pinball game. So let's 
kind of delve into this game a bit. I don't have my capture card yet. That will come tomorrow. So I did play it on an emulator. So what do we have here as far as the pinball game goes? You have two tables. One is military themed. The other one is kind of your road trip across America theme. You have four different difficulties. And uh, almost all of the table fits on the screen at once. It does scroll a little bit up to get the top part of the table. As far as the tables themselves, the graphics are a little bit murky. And uh, neither table is bad, but neither one is really all that exciting either. You have your standard pinball table things where if you hit the ball into such and such place you'll get this bonus and you'll have new sound effects. Sound effects are a bit murky as well. Which is one for me to say because I know my videos aren't exactly the, of the best audio quality at the moment. But the, the music is is your cheesy casual music fair. And if you might as well just turn off listen to something you actually might want to listen to. Or maybe you can play the play your own little music in the background while playing the pinball table. The controls are responsive. You have your tilt and then your flippers. The shoulder uses the shoulder buttons for the flippers. And all of it's responsive enough to play the game. I know it's a PlayStation 1 era, but th this ball looks... It just doesn't look that good. It almost looks like it's just the same graphic that gets smaller as it goes in the distance a little bit, and then bigger as it comes up, but it doesn't doesn't look like it's rolling. It just looks like it's kind of coasting over the image of the table. And, it, and as far as pinball games go, there there were pinball games a, almost a decade before this that had much better pinball physics as well as more interesting tables. And I mean, look on the screen right now is the the patriotic theme table which I believe is the better of the two the graphics aren't just aren't all that impressive it's just you got your flag you got your your black male white male and white lady in what appear to be naval outfits and a lot of the other stuff is either hard it's mostly hard to make out you have some little stuff off to the side that look like barracks and then a, a house with a red cross symbol on it. And some little toy soldiers and stuff. And it's just not an overly impressive table. You have your, your screen on the top that's uh, supposed to be the Matrix style graphics dot matrix style graphics that say what's going on on the table which does stay in place even when the table moves given you only have two tables here and then four different difficulties there's not really a whole lot of replayability here even if you do enjoy pinball games and there are, are tons of other I shouldn't say tons but there are multiple other play, uh, pinball games on the playstation that are more interesting to play And and at this point, like it, this is late in the PlayStation life cycle, and mo a lot of the stuff being re released at this point on the PlayStation One was mostly shovelware style titles, and this is right up there with the Ford Truck Mania, as far as it, it is a much better game than Ford Truck Mania, but it's up there in the category of just kind of shovelware on the platform. not really all that it's not really just not a whole lot going on the table and 
kind of, like I said, the ball has a really dull look to it. And you can play the Pro Pinball series and some other series on the platform and it, it, that are much more refined as far as pinball games go. The, the ball just doesn't seem to, doesn't feel like it has any weight to it. And it, its acceleration is way too fast. You'd think this table was almost standing up at a, nine, a 90 degree angle. Well, not quite, but if this were to be an actual pinball table with ball physics like this, it would be at a non-standard pinball machine angle. And there are multi-ball modes you can do. As, as far as fun factor, I mean the, the tables were fun enough to play through. I mean, it wasn't much. But it was, it wasn't atrocious. And you you can pick up this game for less than a dollar if you enjoy pinball, and you're spending less than five bucks on it. Eh, go ahead and pick it up. But you're not wasting the money. It's really not that. It's not that bad. If you're looking for a serious pinball experience to keep you amused for hours on end, it's not here. It, it, it's really not. This this is late PlayStation One shovelware, and it, it's like one four truck mania, where it's like one of those games where you just throw it in a truck stop. Hopefully somebody buys it. You'll get some people to buy it, or you'll have the people that own a PlayStation One. They'll can't afford a PlayStation 2, but they want new games, so they'll buy about anything. You also have the collectors like myself that will buy about anything, just especially if it's seemingly obscure or has a story behind it, just because it's something we can buy. But as far as a review for this, I, mean, I, I can pull up just in my own collection, and I don't really play pinball games, I can find. I probably have a maybe a dozen pinball games altogether, if that. Probably close to like, actually probably about eight pinball games altogether. And this is in the bottom half. There are there are worse pinball games out there. And this is better than much, much better than the early DOS pinball construction set style games that were rather atrocious. It's the, the sounds m muddled. Graphics are rather uninspired. The tables are boring. The ball physics isn't that great. And there's just th this is a notch below mediocre, I would say. But it, it's not unplayable. A pinball fan that just wants something for the PlayStation 1 platform will find some fun in this. So, so where do I put this on the list? Where do I put this game on the list? Well, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. It's below average. Which means it needs to go someplace. I'm going to put it below Firewatch, above Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I'm going to put it below Witchhaven. And, uh, let's see. Where does this stack up compared to Double Dragon 3 on the PC? You know, at least Double Dragon 3 on the PC once you get the janky controls down. Which is more just learning how to spam jump kicks. At least there is more variety there. 
So I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. We're going to put it 18th on the list. It is better than Who Framed Roger Rabbit for the PC. And worse than Double Dragon 3 for the PC. Like I said, uh, unless you're a hardcore pinball fan that only owns a PlayStation 1, or you own so many pinball games that you just want two new tables that play well enough as pinball tables where you're willing to where you're willing to forgive some of the lackluster aspects of this game well the many lackluster aspects uh, unless you fall in that category or if you're just a collector and you're looking to stock up on some cheap PlayStation games which sports games and pinball games except for those that are extremely rare tend to not hold their value that well and unless you fall into one of those categories just skip this one you can do much better and to be honest if, if you're on a Windows XP machine still j just pull up that space cadet table or whatever it is and get your pinball fix there so hope you enjoyed the review review please like subscribe and if you happen to enjoy this game, feel free to let comment below. Let me know why. And I, I think with had there been some more time put into it, into getting the had there just been a few more finishing touches put on it, and maybe a a better table design for the two tables, better graphics, it, it could have been a, a mediocre game. It's just not there. It's, it, it's, it's tough to say a pinball game as far as all PC games go, unless there is a lot there saying it's an absolute masterpiece, unless it somehow recaptures the pinball experience and has amazing visuals for, and sound. But there's many examples of good pinball games out there that will get your pinball fix if you can't afford an actual pinball table or don't have the room. So, like I said, like, subscribe, and have a great day.